our entrance antiphon for the Tuesday of the fifth week of Easter. Sing praise to our God, all you who fear God, both small and great, for now salvation and strength have come and the power of his Christ, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and won over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. From after proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Atalia, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done for them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends, O Lord, O Lord the glorious wonder. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Your friends may go, O Lord, glorious splendor of your name. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First, just a little tutorial with our fourth and eighth graders. So good to be with you today on May the 4th day. (laughs) If you look at page 151 in your missalettes, 151. Go ahead and open them up, page 151. This may be helpful to you whenever you come to weekday masses for school masses or otherwise. Though they don't give you all the readings, if you look on page 151, it gives the mass propers. Propers are special prayers unique to the day. And so when you look at May the 4th Tuesday, it gives you the list of the readings from Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel. And then it gives you, it says the entrance, what's called the introit. And that's that entrance antiphon you heard me read at the beginning of Mass. And you're welcome to read that aloud too, any of the parishioners or people attending Mass, when the priest begins with the entrance antiphon to say that line, right? Where is it from today? From what book? What does it say after entrance, the word entrance? 
Revelation, the book early, excellent, thank you so much. So these are scriptural texts and they would often be sung and chosen to be sung first. So sometimes we have hymns that might substitute for them, but otherwise we pray from scripture itself. We love the Bible as Catholic Christians and so even before we have a song, we have this beautiful kind of antiphon from scripture. And then you're given the responsorial psalm with the response, so I know right now, especially with our sound system broken and in the midst of being replaced, it may be hard to hear at times. So here you've got the actual antiphon and the different strophes, right, for the psalm. What psalm do we use today? What number? You can see it after resp. Yep. 145, then the verses afterwards, Psalm 145. So if you find a psalm you really like or that touches your heart, you can use this to try to find the number to be able to go back to it. Then you look lower, you see the gospel acclamation with the alleluia, alleluia. And then this too gives us a phrase from scripture. It may be from the gospel of the day or something related to it, but it's really an important one because it tells us sometimes the theme of the readings or the heart of the gospel. Why don't we say the one aloud today where it says gospel acclamation below, ready? All together. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. So this is from the gospel of Luke 24 from verses 46 and 26 kind of melded together. So that might be the heart of what the homily is gonna be in a moment. And then we look, one last thing they give us was called the communion antiphon. And when we get to that part in the mass, I'm hoping you'll all open your book. Again, just find it. You'll see it towards the back of the missalette. They're all done chronologically by the day of the week and the date. And so we have the communion antiphon from Romans. Let's go ahead and read that aloud. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia. So just a helpful guy, now that the books are back in your pews, they're theirs for your use, right? If they're helpful to you to be participating and engaged in the Mass in a deeper way. Again, we have an entrance antiphon, right? The intro it, the entrance, the song, the psalm that we often sing, the gospel acclamation that is sung before the gospel with the Alleluia, and then the communion antiphon. So not everything is in there, but enough to at least help us to hear better. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. That's the gospel antiphon. This is kind of an amazing gospel to me because Jesus reveals his most inner heart. We hear Jesus talking so much, right? But we hear his relationship with the Father and why he goes through everything he goes through. Yes, it's to save us. Yes, it's because he loves us. But at the heart, he's a son. And at the end of the gospel, he says, the ruler of the world has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The only way Jesus is basically saying that the world, the whole world will know that he loves the Father is if he's willing to suffer for the Father. Isn't that true with any real act of love, our moms or dads or friends? It's nice when everything's going really well and everything's peaceful, but it's when there's some suffering in the relationship or one of the individuals in the relationship has a kind of pain, right? That you really get tested. And you can really tell who are your true friends from your false friends. Because real friends, real love, is always going to be willing to suffer with, to endure. That means on both sides. It means when you can't help your friend who's really suffering in pain, but you want to commiserate with them, be in empathy with them, be in love with them, right? Stay with them, remain with them, don't run away because it's, it's hard to be with somebody in pain. And it's sometimes hard for us to be the one in pain, right? So in every respect, God is saying, Suffering has a place in this world. It's the proof of love. That's why in the first reading today, the apostles through Paul, they say this amazing thing. It's necessary for us to undergo many hardships, sufferings, right? To enter the kingdom of God. Not just because suffering makes us better people. We're not stoics, we Christians, right? Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, okay, maybe. But whatever you endure out of love, makes you loving. And again, love is tested in this world by the endurance and patience of suffering. Notice what he says, the Lord again, he says, 
that the world must know that I love the Father. He desires the whole world to see him on the cross to know how much he thinks of God the Father. And it's that love that animates St. Paul and all the different apostles that go throughout the world. If we had a map of Europe and the Middle East, right, it'd be really fun to take a marker and go to all these places. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium. So it says, on the following day, Paul with Barnabas left for Derby, and then they went to Lystra, and then to Iconium, and then to Antioch, and then they go to Pisidia, and then they reach Pamphylia, and then they go to Perga, and then they go down to Italia, and then they go to Antioch again. They're going everywhere. Because Christ, in his final words, desires that all people might know the love of his heart for the Father and experience the loving heart of the Father for themselves as his sons and daughters. To go out to all the ends of the earth. And the apostles are doing that as much as they can back in the day. It's our commission too, brothers and sisters, to ignite the world on fire with love, to go out to whatever parts of the world God can call us to. Maybe we don't go to all these different cities or Denver or Los Angeles or Boston or Houston, but you never know here in Omaha the different ways that he might put us in different relationships, different houses within the school to meet different students, move to different neighborhoods, that we too might bring them a gift of joy that even when we suffer, we still love God and desire all to know that same loving heart themselves. May the Lord be blessed. Amen. Together, my brothers and sisters, we stand and offer up our universal prayer. With St. Joseph at our side, let us humbly petition our heavenly creator to hear our needs today. That all church leaders may guide us with peace in their hearts as we strive to be one body in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The legislative bodies may enact just and fair laws that protect the rights of all God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are sick may find comfort in Christ's triumph over suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our willingness to live in patience and to accept the sufferings in our lives, to help others through intercession and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The fathers, stepfathers, and foster fathers in our faith community may strive to be honorable mentors to their children, by heeding the example of St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions and concerns we hold in our hearts. And that those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith may enjoy the rewards of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son journeyed so far from heaven down here to earth to spread the gospel message, to spread your loving heart. Help us to stay in love, to remain in love, and to hear these prayers through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Masses celebrated here today at Christ the King are offered for the following intentions. This Mass is offered for the intentions of Mary Finnegan, and our afternoon Mass today is offered for the deceased members of the Tomsky family. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, 
all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, 
once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Page 151, the communion antiphon, page 151. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia. In solidarity with all those who may not be able to receive sacramental communion for whatever reason this day, we pray with them the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. So good to be with all of you at Mass this day and for all of us joining from their homes or listening on the radio. Again, just to take that message with us this day. For what are we willing to suffer, brothers and sisters? For whom are we willing to suffer? That answer will reveal what we truly value in this world. That answer will reveal what we truly love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.